Dr. Jean Bennett on gene therapy, discovering genes that cause inherited blindness and developing gene therapies. I didn't actually start working on vision until my, um, I would say, in medical school. I went to graduate school and then I did a postdoc and um, then I knew I wanted to develop gene-based treatments. It was a very exciting time when people were starting to use genes to engineer animals and the obvious step was to be able to use genes to correct disease, correct inherited diseases. And um, so I went to medical school to learn about the diseases and then went back to the lab and uh, studied developmental genetics and human genetics. And it was about two years into my postdoctoral fellowship that I started collaborating with somebody who works on the retina. And I got really interested in the tissue and in the diseases. We have learned a great deal about the genetics of different forms of inherited retinal degenerations for the past 20 years. We didn't even know what one of these genes was 21 years ago, uh, 22 years ago, really. Um, but now uh, we know more, what, we have identified more than 225 different genes which can cause uh, blinding disease. We have animal models for these diseases, which are pretty faithful in terms of reflecting the human condition. We um, are able to study the humans and gain information from them about how to deliver genes to the retina safely, how to measure any change that is due to delivery of the genes, um, and hopefully rescue or, or of the disease or, or halting it in its tracks. And there are many aspects about the retina which are favorable from a gene delivery standpoint. One, the tissue is really a small size. So um, we can deliver a very small fraction of material compared to what one would have to deliver if one were treating a systemic disease like cystic fibrosis or hemophilia or muscular dystrophy. And that's really good because it minimizes <clears throat> Excuse me. It minimizes the possibility of developing an immune response, um, which has been a challenge for other systemic diseases. And the eye has other favorable characteristics in terms of immune response. Uh, it, it's sequestered from the blood. The retina is sequestered from the blood supply, and uh, there are mole molecules endogenous in the eye, which minimize inflammation. So I think we're pretty lucky with the choice of this target organ. There. There's a series of steps that one has to go through in order to develop a clinical trial. And um, that's what, even once the science has been developed. And those studies are time consuming and um, surrounded by all sorts of regulatory issues. So for example, um, one has to obtain uh, safety data from multiple different animal models, or at least one or two different animal species to satisfy requirements of the FDA, um, and also to satisfy our own requirements that this is not going to be toxic. Um, one has to obtain recombinant DNA approval. One has to obtain regulatory approval from the institution, i.e. go through the Institutional Review Board, which um, is an ethics board and a scientific review board, et cetera, um, that makes sure that the um, risks and benefits are appropriate for enrolling human subjects. Um, and then one has to go through the federal um, regulatory uh, issues, including presenting material at what's called the Recombinant DNA Advisory Committee and the NIH and, um, and the FDA. It's a very long process and it's very costly. So besides the regulatory issues, um, the, it, it takes time to obtain the funding uh, to move forward. And um, this, this is also affected by intellectual property and other issues which the researchers may not have control over, it requires negotiations between lawyers, between different institutions, uh, between scientists and clinicians, 
And it requires the clinicians working very closely with the scientists um, to develop the optimal outcome measures for a clinical trial and so forth. It's a long, involved process. And all of this happens before you can actually enroll a human patient <laughs> and, and uh, talk to them about a study. However, I think there's great promise in uh, being able to take advantage of the milestones that have been met in the clinical trials that have um, been carried out to date and leverage that so that the process could be quicker for uh, future trials. And um, that's something that I sincerely hope will happen. There are more than two dozen different blinding conditions where we now have proof of concept that a particular strategy will, will save vision. Why not move those forward? I think now's the time. There's so many um, diseases, blinding diseases, where we know the gene defect, we know the mutations, we have animal models. Proof of concept has been demonstrated in the laboratory. Much of this due to the generosity and the foresight of Foundation Fighting Blindness. And it's time now to move those forward and actually get those treatments coming. <laughs>